Welcome guys! You're probably like me. You like playing board games, but you would also like to customize the elements you get in your box. Well, you've come to the right place. And to do that, we're going to use a software called Blender. And uh, this video is about installing it and discovering its interface for the first time. So if you're interested, stay tuned. And in the next videos, on this channel, you will be able to do stuff like this. Or like this. Ah, oh, yeah, this is a card holster. Because most of the games you buy have a lot of cards and they usually don't provide the holsters to hold them. So let's jump into it. Bien. There are two ways you can install Blender. Well, the two ways I recommend, anyway. You can go straight ahead and type blender.org into your browser's navigation bar. And you arrive onto Blender's site. You just have to click the download button right in the middle and click download Blender. There's a, an orange button right here that proposes to download the beta version of Blender 2.8. We are not going to do that right now and we are going to download the official release. Your operating system should be detected automatically but you can choose in the list below the button. So click download Blender, wait a few seconds and save the file on your hard drive. I'm not going to do it. I've been using Blender for 10 years now. So I'll cancel, cancel this. And once it is downloaded, double click onto the installer, follow the instructions and I'll meet you afterwards. The other way to install Blender is if you're a Steam user. If you have a Steam account, you can download Steam directly from the shop. In the search field, you just have to type in Blender and it will appear in the list. You can click on it and click here to download Blender. It's completely free. The main advantage of using Blender through Steam is that you get the updates automatically. So now go ahead and double click the Blender icon that should have appeared on your desktop. Once it is launched, this is what you should get. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is to go into the file menu under user preferences. We are going to tweak a few things. The first thing we are going to do in, under the input tab is to change the way we select objects in Blender and this is done right here. So Blender in Blender you select with the right button but that's not what we want. I've always been used to selecting with the left mouse button and if you have a laptop you should click the emulate numpad uh, box. All right, once it's done, it's not my case, so I won't uh, tick it. And uh, the themes tab, you can choose your theme by default. Your blender should look like this. I don't like it. You can choose a more elegant one or you can choose mine, which is Elsune, this one. And you can download an add-on. Let me show you how it's done. You type the name of the add-on you want. There are many official add-ons pre-installed with Blender. And if it isn't ticked, you can tick the export paper model add-on. And once everything is done, you can click save user settings and close this window. All right, 
So now for the 3D interface right in the middle of your screen. To navigate within this space, you can use the middle mouse button like this. So you normally have a mouse wheel. You can use it to zoom in or out. All right. With, if you click on that wheel, so the middle mouse button, you'll be able to rotate around your object. Very nice. Now, if you want to pan the view from left to right or top to bottom, you just hold down the shift key and click on the middle mouse button at the same time. And this is what happens. Good. Sometimes when you navigate within your 3D space, you can get lost. Let's say I panned too far. Well, you can go back by clicking the period on your numpad to center the view onto the object you have selected. Nice tip, isn't it? Okay, so one last thing for navigation. I'm going to delete, delete this cube. I'm going to add a more interesting object. You don't have to worry about all this right now. It's just for uh, demonstration purposes. I have a monkey in my scene and I want to look at it from the front. I press 1 on the numpad and I have my monkey from the front. If I press 7, I have it from the top. And if I press 3, I have it from the side. You can see that there is a perspective in my view. I can look at everything into orthographic mode by pressing numpad 5. Perspective, orthographic mode, perspective. Okay, one last thing. I can look at the front and if I want to look at the rear, the opposite view, I just press Ctrl and 1. If I'm looking at one side and I want to see the other side, Ctrl 3. If I'm looking at the top and I want to have a look at the bottom, I press Ctrl 7. All right. That's it. Now, let's have a look at the layout of my screen. In Blender, the interface can become very cluttered. The default interface, in fact, is quite cluttered. So everything is customizable. So you don't have to worry about all that. I'm going to show you how it's done. So first thing, you have two panels on the left and right. This one is, is the tools panel. This is the panel you use to, to interact with objects in your scene. So, uh, for instance, if I want to translate this monkey, I click the translate key and it is translated, but I'm not going to do that. So if you don't want that panel, you can press the T key for tools, 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 tools. The properties panel can be hidden as well by pressing N. Okay. One more interesting thing, as you can see, all these menus can be um, retracted. For that, you can press the triangle to hide everything under the section. And if you hold down the left mouse button while dragging the mouse onto the other sections, you'll be able to open all of them or close all of them. Okay. This is the same for this. Open everything or close everything. Okay. Next, there are in fact four windows opened into Blender right now. The one in the middle is called the 3D view. The one at the top is called the info view. This one is called the outliner 
and this one is called the properties. Right, I want to give more space to the outliner because sometimes you have a thousand objects into your scene and you want to be and you want to easily find them. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename this layout. As you can see, there are default layouts. You can select the 3D view. You can select the animation view if you are um, interested into animation. You can select um, the compositing view. This is the view we are going to be using when we'll um, use materials and textures. And the default view. You can navigate between all those views by holding control and left or right arrows control left right okay default view uh, let's give it a new name and let's create a new layout and call it my layout all right now you can rearrange everything onto your scene onto your screen rather so let's say i want to get rid of the outliner i can click at the top right corner of every window, you'll see the cursor will change. There are three little bars. If you click on them and drag it, you can crush the window under it. Okay? So if you want to add a new window, just drag this. It will duplicate the current window. And if you click at the bottom left, these are all the windows available. I want to go back to my outliner. And here it is. I have all the space I want for my, for my outliner. So what's the outliner good for? So as I told you, you can have a thousand objects into your scene. If you want to quickly jump from one object to another, you can just select the object, lamp, camera, Suzanne, or you can uh, research it. At the bottom of this window, scroll the mouse to show more op options, and in the search field, type in camera. And you see, it has selected your camera. Sorry, uh, camera. Now I can press the period and it will zoom onto the object I have selected. Let's go back to our Suzanne period. And here it is. OK. So if I want to go back to the default, you see. Or the one I've just saved, my layout. OK. Two more things. First, we are going to be working into millimeters. By default, Blender uses Blender units. So let's change that. Go into the properties window right here. Click onto the third icon. This one, it's called the, th the scene properties window. And under scene, you will see units. Click metric or imperial depending on your preferences and change the unit to 0 0.001 for millimeters something weird just happened so if i open the properties panel under transform section dimensions of my object it is now a tiny object and moreover the camera seems to be cutting the scene at one point. That's called clipping. So to correct the clipping, you can go into view in the properties panel and change the clipping to one kilometer. And here we are. Everything has been corrected. I can zoom in my Suzanne. One last thing. 
under display the grid now isn't really at the right scale we are going to correct that we want a grid in millimeters so 0 0.001 or you can just press one millimeter ah this one isn't working but anyways and let's say i want a comfortable grid okay now i have a grid i can work with uh, that's okay one last thing i have here a gizmo that allows me to manipulate my object so i can move the suzanne up or down to cancel it you just press ctrl z i can move it on the x axis ctrl z or i can move it on the y axis control z if i want to get rid of that gizmo i very seldom use it myself i press control space all right last but not least say you have um, multiple screens you can take advantage of that with blender by creating as many windows of blender as you want say i want to duplicate my 3d view onto my next monitor i press shift click on the three bars at the top right corner drag and it just created a new window i can take that window and put it onto my other screen okay If I want to temporarily zoom in into a window, I can use shift space, shift space, shift space, same for the outliner. If I want to focus onto the outliner, shift space, shift space, the properties window, same thing, shift space shift space now that we've done a lot of change changes to the interface it's time to save everything so that we get them back when we launch blender the next time so for that you go into file user preferences uh, sorry you go into file save startup file confirm and voila Next time you open Blender, your layouts will be there. And that's it for today. I hope you were able to follow along. If it isn't the case, please guys, let me know in the comment section below. I'll answer your problems and um, I'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye bye.